It's nine o'clock. It's Saturday morning. It's time for the Monster Magic Saturday Show. Let's do this. Wake up, it's a beautiful morning. <sighs> yeah, hey, good morning, everybody, and Monster Magic fans. Uh, almost a Roland Rat impression there, wasn't it? Um, I hope you're well. It's uh, it's a bit of a cold Saturday morning. The heat is on and uh, the river's rising and bubbling about. But I am here and that is what matters. And so are you, which makes it all the better for me. Um, wow, what a show. So I've got uh, quite a few products to run through today, which is really exciting. But the big, the big news is that uh, I've made myself a cup of tea and the milk I wasn't sure about, but um, it's turned out fine. No white bits floating in the top. So uh, a bit of a triumph there. And uh, hopefully the start of a very good show and the weekend. First up, we have uh, Michelle Huot's Visa Versa. This is something I saw uh, a little while ago on the Card Shark uh, website, and it is Michelle who did the socks. You might remember him, socks. He also had a part in Priceless, although Richard Sanders seems to have a bigger name for that than he does. I'm not quite sure how that was divided up, but um, Visa Versa is a invisible deck style effect. In fact, it is. It's, 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 it's an invisible deck, but instead of playing cards. Instead of card numbers being on the cards, it is obviously still cards. Um, each card is uh, got a country on it and like a holiday destination. And the back, it looks a little bit like a passport rather than a rider back design. Um, I'll flash up some pictures of uh, of the cards. But um, what it is, it is it's a nice way of doing an invisible deck without asking someone going, have you got a favorite card or name any card? Um, you can ask them to name a country, a country they'd like to visit, a country they've had a great holiday in previously, um, sort of somewhere they'd like to go. Or and you can talk about how, I don't know, families argue about where they go or, or anything like that, um, where you went on your honeymoon, perhaps. So there's a real hook, an emotional hook that you can create using this deck. Um, and it is simply just an invisible deck. If you don't do the invisible deck, um, there are some disadvantages uh, using countries rather than playing cards. And that's there's no there's no maths you can really do with the country. So in order to get around that, there's a coding on the cards to let you know how the cards are paired up. If that makes any sense. Um, I'm sure everyone knows how an invisible deck works. But and the, and the pairing is is based on card values. You can't do it with uh, countries. So he's got little sort of markings that let you know how they're paired up. There is a crib on the back uh, that helps you know which, which is what countries are on which side. And that's very easy to understand, to be honest. That's um, based on the alphabet. So that's, that's a doddle. So you basically you have, uh, you know, so many letters on one side, countries, countries starting with other letters on the other side. And um, that makes it very easy. And the best way, the, the only real way I think I would be performing this would be, would be, I'm sure you can do this, people do this with the Invisible Deck all the time, is to have it up here. And that way you are simply just looking for the right card as opposed to having to look for the markings. So um, you just do it like that. And you can do that close up, fine. Um, it's often done on stage that way. It makes, it makes the Invisible Deck much easier. And it also makes this trick much easier. So it's a nice... It's a nice presentation, a nice hook for the invisible deck, which I, I, I'm surprised more people haven't come up with more other ideas for it. But um, yeah, it's really good. It's um, I don't know how much it is. I shall um, I shall check, but um, it's certainly it's certainly worth having a look at. Check out the performance on on the website. And I've just heard in a flashback that Visa Versa is uh, twenty two ninety nine. Is that right? Twenty nine ninety nine. Twenty nine ninety nine for Visa Versa. Um, and yeah, certainly check it out. Okay, and now for the trick that everybody has been clamoring for, everyone's talking about, everyone wants, and Monster Magic have just a few in stock. It's The King's Secret by Mark Bennett and Matthew Wright. This is The King's Secret. Keep it hush hush. <laughs> Thank you very much. Not that king, you dirty birth. 
King Charles. It's his coronation coming up. And this trick, perfect, perfect for your coronation. Really help celebrate the day. But when we'll be having the street parties, come rain or shine. And magicians will be busy. Every magician should be having a gig of the coronation. And this trick, this trick really, really plays into that. Now, um, a few years ago, uh, they produced the Queen's Nose for the Queen's Jubilee, um, and they have sort of rehashed the similar plot for the King's Secret for the King's uh, Coronation. And um, I think next year, I think Princess Eugenie is uh, having her 21st birthday, so I'm expecting some great stuff from them for that. Um, if you're not familiar with the queen's nose the trick is very is, is very similar to that if you did buy the queen's nose you'll know everything about it but the basic plot is uh you uh you introduce yourself as part of the uh noble 52 the king's secret magic club and you can show that you've got uh, a commemorative a coin that he gives you and you've got the special deck of cards which i'll talk about later uh, they choose a card uh, completely at random. You shuffle the deck. You show that their card isn't. You show what card, and you put an indifferent card in their hand. You put the coin on top. They say hey, hocus pocus. They lift the coin. They turn the card over, and the indifferent card has changed into their card, their selected card. You then turn that selected card back over. Put the coin back on top. They choose another card. They whisper hocus pocus into the coin once again. They turn over the card and the card hasn't changed. It is still the first selection, which adds an air of disappointment. But then, oh yes, they turn the coin over and on the back of the coin, it reveals that uh, there is the printed, look at their card that they chose. It's a punch between the eyes. It's a Muhammad Ali sting like a bee, fly like a wasp attitude. Um, it's terrific. Don't. Um, it's too, so it's very, very simple in plot and actually in the mechanics. But you don't be fooled by that. This is powerful stuff. When you put, um, if you've ever done, it's, it's one of these, those simple slides in Magic where you show an indifferent card, you put it on the table, you give it a little rub and it's changed into a different card. That is pure eye candy magic to the lay person. We've seen it a million times and are tired of it. But believe me, it blows people away, especially when it's been in their hands and it's had a coin on top. So you're really maximizing the effect. The first phase, you're really maximizing the effects for very little effort, very little work. You've got a great, great little surprise reveal there. Um, and then you do it again, but it's done with the coin and the coin changes. And they've had that coin. They've inspected that coin. Um, so again, it is another sucker punch straight between, you know, it is a knockout. Um, so the effect is great, no doubt about it. Uh, there was um, an issue, uh, well, there wasn't an issue with, with the Queen's nose. The coins sounded a little cheap when you tapped them together and they were quite light when you held them. And I think Mark, Mark and Matthew have really sorted that out here. So this coin um, is... It's super heavy. It's really nice. There's uh, Charles. I guess that's meant to be the Prince of Wales. His emblem on the back. I'm not sure that really is true. And um, there's some writing along around here. And you get them to you show the person the coin. So they're not really inspecting the coin as such. But you're pointing out it's got Hocus Pocus written on it. And you tell them this lovely, lovely story about how you're part of the Noble 52. And um, how King Charles is, is part of the Magic Circle. And all of that them that you can just pull them along with um so it's a great fun presentation and it does get people involved and obviously this is really designed for the coronation and for that it is perfect so they will believe that these coins have been uh, you know um they're, they're king charles coins as far as you can really tell um and it's got hocus pocus written on it which brings in the word hocus pocus and it brings in saying hocus pocus to the coin okay but the queen's nose there was a thing about scratching the nose or the queen knows the play on the words anyway but this is Hocus Pocus and it's on the coin. But these coins are magnificent. I can and I can show you the reveals. The reveals look like that. So the, between the horses. 
but these are heavy and believe me i've uh, i've dropped one on my foot earlier this morning and i felt it i knew i'd done it it hurt um and i'm tough so um these are the coins they are lovely lovely coins and the um the tutorial for the king's secret is uh is matt wright he runs through it it's very very easy to do there's there's, there's some basic slides in it um and you don't really want to veer off into anything harder than that um and i'll tell you why in a minute um there's also the tutorial for the queen's secret is included and with that that's matthew talking to mark and they talk about various different ways they perform it and various different um subtleties that either of them do and that's really nice and that's nice to watch um and it's great to have a little bit of a discussion it might get your mind thinking as well so matthew teaches teaches all the slides needed they are basic you probably know them already but he does cover them just in case and he also talks about various options as to how to bring the coins in and out of play how he does it and so on again i just think keep this as simple as possible there'll be clever ways of of, of getting one you know bringing the coins in and out and moving them around and switching them and whatever you want to do i i i would err on just keeping this nice simple and clean nice um you can probably be thinking a little bit about your pocket management because these things do clink together um this one does have um the actual king charles coin has a little bag you can put it in and i advise using that to sort of separate them and so on and you're going to want to know uh your pocket management is probably the biggest thing your options as to where they are um and you've got to know where stuff is uh but it's easy it is easy just takes a little bit of choreography and practice it's a straight easy to follow plot that is perfect for the coronation with some lovely props uh, you also get with the uh super special edition this deck of cards this deck of cards is very glamorous isn't it hey this is um if i was a king this is uh, exactly the sort of look at that box look at the way that hits the light it's all sort of carbon fibery um all top secret stuff you've got your little um, membership card to the noble 52 which i mean not 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 quite as solid as I would expect, but it's okay. And you have these cards. And uh, this is the only thing. So I get, I get what, uh, I get the idea behind the cards. I get that you wanted it glitzy, glamour, gold, shimmering in the light. That's really, that's good. Um, they are plastic cards. So especially if you're performing at Sil Jubilee, you probably get a uh, jelly on them. And all manner of things from your from your garden parties you know victoria sponge will simply wipe off so for that they're perfect but they literally handle like custard these babies just want to fly out of my hands i don't I, they, they are a nightmare to control which is why you're very lucky you don't really have to do anything other than a couple of cuts um, and a very simple slight in order in order to perform the, the routine because these are these, these just want to these just want to hit the floor i don't know they don't want to oh, they just even even look at i don't know Ooh. so um that is my only quibble they look great they absolutely look great they are fine for for this routine because you don't need to do anything with them you know you're never going to be uh, fanning them beautifully or anything like that so yeah um so they look they look the part you just wouldn't be using these in real life for any other routine but for this routine they're perfect and they are fine for it but i think that's a bit of i feel that's a bit of a shame i would have quite liked to have um had better cards uh, but there you go and i like charles i like charles he's had a rough life is he and and camilla too camilla and she ah she scrubs up all right does that last say eh, eh? <coughs> so that's it so 49.99 you've got it's a two-phase trick it's powerful it's ideal for the coronation it comes all in a box 
And if you want to spend a little time, you can sit down at Coronation and you can tell this story to a lovely group and really wow them. And the coins, like I say, are, are, are absolutely super. <sighs> did you see that? Did you see that? I caught it. I did. I caught it. Um, so there you go. So I do uh, highly recommend it. Um, can't wait to see what they bring out next year for Eugenie's party. But that's forty nine ninety nine. That's the King's Secret. Mark Bennett, Matthew Wright. <sighs> Bonjour, apostrophe, canambert, petit pois. Je m'appelle Philippe Stackers. The coins, pour the king's secret. C'est beau, c'est magnifique, c'est beautiful, no? Mais les cartes, les mètres. And now, would you believe it, there's a new wallet on the market. Uh, I'm a couple of weeks behind on this new wallet, to be fair. Um, but no one asked me for it, so um, it sort of passed me by. And then I, I saw it, I thought, well, it's quite interesting. Quite like the size of it. Right up sounds good. Let's check it out. And here it is. Comet by Andrew Dean. This one is uh, the brown and silver version. And I shall show you what the brown and silver version looks like. You get it, it's a nice box. And you get this lovely brown wallet. It's a nice sized wallet, a definitely nice sized wallet. It's got uh, an envelope for your business card. It's got one of these silver card holders in. So this is when it talks about the different uh, color types. You can have different leather and different color card holders. And these are the card holders. They've got a little switch here. So they that pops your cards up. Um, why don't I get my credit cards and put these in here? I really should have put my cards in here, shouldn't I? And then popped it up. Hang on one second. So they put your cards in there and bam, up they come for easy access. So it's still quite a nice little, um, quite a nice feature of the wallet, really. Um, let's get to the functionality, shall we? Let me tell you what about it. So you can do a card to wallet with it. Um, and uh, the card to wallet, so he teaches several ways of doing the card to wallet without folding the card. And that, the first way is sort of uh, a deceptive way of doing it. The card isn't actually in the wallet. It appears as if it's coming from your wallet. Um, and it's still not easy to do um, because there's no guide for it or anything else. You're gonna really going to have to sort of work the wallet a little bit to be able to sort of go into your pocket, load the card, bring the wallet out without too much fumbling um, and rolling your eyes, you know that. You might be doing that a little bit. Um, so didn't like that bit at all. Um, thought that was um, a waste of time. That pretty much sums up this wallet. I think I'm afraid, um, Andrew, you look like, you seem like a really nice guy, um, but I do think this wallet is a waste of time. Uh, then you've got um, options for um, the folded card. So you can have a card folded and the card can appear down here in between your cards. So you can put that, pop it out, and the folded card will be down in here. That um, is probably my, my probably the favourite way of doing it. That's probably how I, the, probably the one use for this wallet I would do would be having the folded card loaded down in here between all your credit cards. Um, you've only got to fold it half, so it's not a full Mercury card fold or anything like that. Um, and the advantage of that is you don't need a guide. It'd be very easy to do, very easy to load it in here. I just don't see why you need this wallet to do it. You just need any wallet with this. And also because it's got a slot at the top and that's where the card comes out, I think it's probably quite obvious that you've sort of done that inside your pocket. So, um, so it's a very weak, it's the best option with this wallet, I think, but it's very weak. And you wouldn't really, I mean, you'd be much better off with just any of the other hit wallets. The wallet market is vast, isn't it? I mean, you know, some people, God, uh, and I know some people who literally, you know, lay people have one wallet for 20 years. Magicians have 20 wallets um, in one year. So it's madness. Um, and this one is is just, I mean, it's just a miss on lots of levels, but there you go. So um, that would probably the best car load. There is another option to have the half card um, appear in the wallet, 
but that without any any way of knowing where the slot is is virtually impossible in my mind and then the final option the option that really sells this wallet is the card to envelope it's a folded card you have to fold the card in half to get it in the envelope the envelope is in this slot here so this would be where the envelope is and you put it out and it is uh, a proper sealed envelope um with the card with the half folded card inside it has to be half carded have to be has to be folded because the wallet's not big enough to take a full card so um which is a bit of a shame i mean but but that's not the big issue the big issue is you also need to have um something in 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 so it's set up so you've got something to help you get that card in that you then need to ditch out. And, and that was an old way of doing it. It was an old sort of principle that I think we've moved on from. And so this sort of seems like it's gone backwards a little bit. Um, it probably, you know, um, so you've got to sort of go in. You've got, you've got a bit double dipping, I think. Um, you can get around. You could probably use your business card in, instead of what Andrew suggests and do it that way. Um, but I just don't like it. I just don't like it. Uh, what can I say? There's that. And then he talks about a peak. Um, there is a peak. The peak's a bit of an afterthought, I feel. Probably wouldn't have mentioned it. Um, maybe maybe it's fine. Um, but you can get a peak. Uh, and he shows you how to do it and everything else. It's quite bold. Um, very problem with angles. Uh, but it's there. If you want to do a peak with it, you can. I wouldn't. Um, I'm sorry. It's just. It's just. It's uh, it's leather. It's machine stitched. Um, so what can I say? It does work. It doesn't do it the best as a lot of other wallets. You've got wallets like the Nexus wallet or the TCC wallets the the the, the in-out wallet or whatever it's called you've also got the vast jol range um it's just it's just not up there with any of those it doesn't do any of it any any one thing better than any other wallet um it's sort of lower down the placings in in every category um peak card to wallet it, it's it's just too far down the list to, to, to recommend um it's nicely made it's a nice size. I guess the card thing's very modern. I'm trying to. Hmm. No, no, I can't think. Um... Anyway, so that's that. It's um, it's sixty-seven ninety-nine. Several color options available. Um, if you're really desperate for a new wallet. It's nice leather, um, nice leather, nicely made, good size. Uh, I just use it as my normal wallet. Mad, you blur le chat and le chien. Ah, the wallet, the wallet, the comet, but Andrew Dean, c'est the leather, c'est beau, c'est from a joyful vache, no? Mais the functional je ne sais quoi. And now we've got Bounce by House of Crow. What a cool name is House of Crow. Hey, they've really put some thought into their name. I've come up with House of Crow. Sounds cool, dark, mysterious, excellent. If only they put that much effort into their products, it would be fantastic, wouldn't it? So this is Bounce. Um, it is uh, by uh, HOC as they also like to call themselves, which doesn't sound half as cool as House of Crow. <sighs> this is, what well, it, it's like double deception, but with playing cards. It's a nice visual card through t-shirt. You have a card selected. If you put it between two jacks or queens, depending on what your gimmick is. I'm not sure if all the gimmicks are the same or not. I haven't bothered opening many of them. They hold out their t-shirt. You put the sandwich on their t-shirt. You pluck down the, their selection visually vanishes and you pull it out from under their t-shirt. So if you know Double Deception by uh, Mark Mason and Bob Swaddling, that's done with coins. 
This is done with a signed selection, signed no less. Yes, um, it's a pure miracle eye candy. Um, you'd be a fool um, to buy it. What do I what, what what do I hate about this? Right. So at the start of the tutorial, there is a disclaimer. I don't know why it's called a disclaimer. It's a statement, really. And the statement says that uh, House of Crow are very keen to provide the best magic products they possibly can to everybody that they possibly can. And that they did a survey in 2022 where they sent a thousand magicians of all skill levels from from top professionals to beginners asking them certain questions and one of the questions they said was they'd like their tutorials short and sweet without any filler and believe me house and crow have managed this uh, completely the tutorial is uh, absolutely dire it is probably is about eight minutes long if that um and what it is it's it, it's videos in a sort of darkened environment very moodily lit close-ups of the cards and, and and various hands doing various moves and in between all of that it flashes up a little bit like it's in, in black and white film uh things of you know this is the gimmick the gimmick is this and you're i'm now going to show you how to you know get have a card selected but that is written in this terrible font no spacing between the words and it literally flashes up so you're constantly having to press the pause button every time you see some writing on the screen to read it because it goes oh, yeah. oh, they've gone there it is now it's gone oh, yeah, yeah. no so it's you're constantly pressing the pause button to try and read what it says if i want to read film i'll take bosch last pictures um and then the directions just cover so little um i don't think i i would bet a lot of money that they have never ever ever performed this in the live environment um there's no footage of them ever performing it the tutorial hasn't got a live performance on it it simply has them running through it and one of the bits one of the bits it goes flash up you're not gonna do a secret move this is the move got to press pause got to press pause that flashes up and he goes, yeah, the secret move is this. And it's just him doing it out in the open. Just the hands showing you what the move is. There's no, uh, there's no discussion on when to do the move, um, how to make it more deceptive, how to cover your angles, what to be, you know, uh, what the spectator should be doing at this point, other than watching you frying your hands whilst you're doing this supposedly secret move. Because there's no real performance. It's just him running through it with, with, um, with a dummy, I think, I don't know, it's probably a person standing there um, just, you know, doing the actions. It is absolutely awful. It's about six minutes long. It teaches you naff all. Um, so they really have um, uh, achieved their aim of having a tutorial with no filler whatsoever. It's just got no filling in it um, at all. Um, I don't, there's no, there's no advice on how to repair the gimmick should the gimmick break, which I'm guessing it probably will. The gimmick is also a bit flaky, um, so it's got some sort of, I'll call it a locking mechanism. It's meant to lock, but getting it to do that, you know, I don't know, seven out of ten times, it's fine, but it's not. Um, no subtleties, no no help, really. Um, it's just, it's just, and I don't, I don't even think it's practical. Um, yeah, even the way even the way they show it, well, they don't show anyone actually performing it. They just show the little bits of it. They just show the little clips. And this is my hand going into my pocket, and putting this out. No real, you know, it's nothing's in real time. Everything's edited and cut, and it's just awful. It's awful. It's probably what I mean. It's worth buying just to see how bad the tutorial is. Um, so there, yeah, that's bounce. Uh, oh dear, putting us to tell you how much it is on a. It's twenty two ninety nine. I'm. If you buy it in the next 24 hours, just to check out how bad the tutorial is and how dire it all is, um, that's fine. But um, on Monday, I shall be taking it down from the website because I'm not selling it. Um, it is just, <sighs> just pants. Quite a nice idea. But House of Crow, you've, 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 um, ooh, you've blotted your copybook, haven't you? Um, so there you go, House of Crow. That's a crow. Bounce. Doesn't bounce. Do, do, do.
the funky gibbon. The funky gibbon. We are here to show you how. Ooh, 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 the funky gibbon. The funky gibbon. And finally, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, thank the Lord. We've got Ben Seidman's permanent record, um, which I'm going to say straight away is um, very similar to Jonathan Pickard's uh, trick that he released, uh, Ambibostrous, I think it was called, uh, back in the day with Magic Box, I believe. This is all mentioned in the trailer, but I just want to put Jonathan's name out there nice and early on. Ben Seidman has taken um, completely invent, you know, independently invented the same gimmick and has really run with it and the tutorial for this has no filler but it's an hour long no filler but it's an hour long because ben simon's performed this trick i believe he's done this hundreds and hundreds of times in a working environment this has been his go-to trick for when he's walking or doing walk around or corporate events or weddings or whenever he's performing every year he's been doing it and and then he's brought it to the market going, I'm getting great reactions with this. I'll share it with people, which is exactly how products should be produced, House of Crow. So um, it's a Saturday morning, isn't it? Right. So here we go. This is um, this is it. So the, the trick is you basically you, you wave the card box around. And if you look at a card box, um, there is um, they've always these card boxes. They've got cards printed here. In this case, it's the Ten of Hearts. That's the standard. You wave this box around, you ask someone to name their favourite card, um, and if they say one of the Force cards, um, all fine and dandy, you go, well, that's because I influenced you because it was on the box, look, and you can show them the box. That's great if it gets a hit, right? So that's, well, let's just pretend it gets a hit. Okay, you ask them what the favourite card is, they say, I suppose, you go, oh, that's interesting, because that's the card on the bottom of the box. Brilliant. You then go, but tell you what we'll do, we'll have you choose a card, and you have a card selected... It turns out to be, um, say, the Ten of Hearts. Um, you then show that the card on the card box is now no longer the Ace of Spades, but it's the Ten of Hearts. Um, absolute genius of a trick. I don't know if I've described that very well, but watch the trailer. Um, it is um, a really, really strong trick. And the strong trick is that, that when they're finished, they've got this genuine card box in their hand so there's nothing gimmicked left in play essentially so this, this so so it's really clever from that point of view when they are looking um when it's when 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 it's a different card on that card box obviously you are slightly vulnerable but they aren't checking it for anything else because you've just pointed it out to them um and it's great the first phase is not always going to be a hit so you've got a couple of options, the most popular options. Um, funnily enough, my most popular option has always been the Seven of Hearts, and, and that's not included. But that's not a biggie, um, especially if you've got if you've got uh, three or four people. The chances are you're gonna hit. Um, ben is very good at saying um, people who present as a man and people who present as a woman, which I I, I appreciate in this day and day and age. So that's very good. But so if you've got a mixed audience, depending on which force card you want to do, you want to choose. Um, people who present themselves as as the sort of person you think is the target for, for that force card. If it doesn't hit, it's not a big deal because you still get to point out that that is on the card box. And you can hand them the card box quite freely and they can go, oh, yeah, it is. It's, yep, yep, yep. It's all, it's all on there, all on JIT. You then take the cards out, give them the card box back and go into the routine. And, and then, yeah, and then their card turns out to be on the back of the printed card box. Um, so it does use basically the card box is pretty so it's ten card so you just need a card box like this. It does come with a specially printed deck of cards, which is great. It's a very clever gimmick set of cards that make the trick slightless. Basically it makes it a complete self worker, which is a really nice thing for Ben to do. It's not how he does it um very often, I don't think, but he does he certainly did do it like that because he talks a lot um about how to add some additional cards in to really really convince people that it is a genuine deck of cards so it's a gimmick deck of cards um in fact that you know so every card is gimmick but he goes he goes away with all these subtleties of doing it and he mentions um lucero armando i believe 
who talks about just just adding these little convincers just to really ram it home to make sure you're fooling as many people as possible so you're just removing any methods and he talks about that and talks about you know so how convincing this gaff deck is and yet how easy it is to 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 well self-working essentially but the other way he then teaches he teaches a little bit of um um bum 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 bum, bum. pre-show yeah close-up pre-show he teaches a little bit of close-up pre-show which is a really interesting idea it's not something i'm not a fan of pre-show he talks about he doesn't know why people aren't a fan of pre-show <coughs> i'm not um but in this sort of scenario it's fine it's not a big it's not a big pre-show it's not really necessary you're not um you're not making a big thing out of it it's not like i'm doing a big mentalist show and i've pre-showed half the audience or anything like that so close-up pre-show very interesting concept and well worth well worth listening to ben talking about that he then talks about how he performs it with um a non-gimmicked deck so you then and the beauty of that really is you just need the gaff card in 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 you know just one gaff card that slips inside the in the deck very easily and you've got this 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 lovely two-phase routine that's an absolute knockout and he teaches all of his moves for that and his subtleties for that as well he taught i don't know it's just full of tips it's full of just great genuine tips and advice and i just i'd love to go and see ben perform because the way he talks about magic and how he thinks about it it's it's, it's lovely lovely to hear he he really really cares about ab about magic and being the best that he can and giving people the best show and having them enjoy his magic as best they can that really comes a comes across i think he's he, and and this is this is just um a really really good trick that ben teaches you how to do it he's provided it with the, with the gimmick deck and everything else and he teaches you how to do it really easily slightly self-working and then he takes it and he goes this is if you want to do a little bit if you close up pre-show if you you know if you want to do the classic force if you want to do this then this is how also you can do it um great stuff great stuff really good and then to top off this project you've got the lovely jonathan pickard and magic box have agreed to share jonathan's work when he first came out um with this gimmick so you've got jonathan's routine at the end as well and that's really worth um watching so this 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 is one of those things that has just been worked refined and everything included in the tutorial there's no filler in the tutorial he's not banging on he's not waffling on he's not making jokes or, or anything like that it, it, he um he talks straight to the camera and he just gives you Advice, advice, advice. Ben Seed Moor. Ben Seed Moor to create a beautiful effect. No. Yeah, the, it's as if he has put the bones of the trick and a bouquet garni in a big pot and let it simmer and reduce to a fine demi glaze. Very clear, but powerful flavors. Um. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So that's permanent record. It is an amazing snip at, it's only $22.99. It's a snip at $22.99. Press the button now, press the button. I'm talking of pressing buttons. Um, have you subscribed? If you could just subscribe, uh, that would be absolutely super. It really does uh, help the channel and, um, and me really. And it gives, you know, it makes my Saturday to watch those numbers drift up from uh, 389 to 392 that's what i'm going for um i was aiming to break uh 400 uh last week um got absolutely nowhere near it so let's just try and get into the 390s um so just three more subscribers would be great if we can do that Uh, now, last week, I did have a competition as well, a competition based on creativity. The idea was uh, how you would find a needle in a haystack and had some great answers, um, some brilliant answers. And that was in order to win the Lone Stranger. The Lone Stranger is a great trick. It's here. I'm going to do a separate review of it. It's a 
brilliant trick. I've been really enjoying performing it. Um, it's very easy to do. Uh, it's I, I do it. I do a three phase version of it, so two, twice face down, and then they choose a card face up, um, and it blows people's minds. Oh, that, that's not possible. That's not possible. Great little trick. Um, it's a whole gimmick deck, um, but there'll be a review about that uh, shortly going up on the website. But let me just talk about um, yes, right, the competition. Here we go. So yeah, we had the competition last week, which was uh, how would you find a needle in a haystack? Yes, and absolutely thrilled to bits with the responses. I'm pleased you're all uh, engaged with it. Um, so what we have here really is um, whew, a tough choice by me, and it's a choice I'm really struggling to make. So lots of people entered. Um, it's Engineer. This engineer did some brilliant stuff. Um, he had a magnet with a metal detector, hay detector, and a, a hay detector rather than um, a metal detector, which was very exciting. Bill Fish had a combine harvester with a magnetic fresher on the front. Um, duplicate needle, Illusion Stay, came up with the idea of a duplicate needle um, hidden inside a piece of straw. Not quite sure how it was going to work, but I did like the concept. Oh, Jay Libovitz. Yes, like a lot of your stuff, um, this is probably one of my, easily one of my favourites, um, was the hard rumple stiltskin uh, to uh, spin the straw into gold, which um brilliant idea. The hobbyist magician, he had lots and lots of ideas, did the hobbyist magician. Uh, I'd glue a thousand magnets to a fishing net um, and create a super large magnet net. Um, very good. Illusion say, clap your hands hard on the side of the haystack until you feel like a prick. That um, brilliant, very good. Um, love the love love the use of wordplay and so on. And talking of um, uh, the use of wordplay, uh, uh, FJ just asked the nineteen eighties wrestler where it hurts. If you're not familiar with giant haystacks, the nineteen eighties wrestler, you really should be um, a massive seven foot geezer uh, who I grew up watching um, over my bowl of uh, rice krispies. Um, so I love the play on words there. That's a really, that's a, that is a really creative way of looking at a problem is uh, changing the words to mean something else. Um, ba -da -ba -bum. the hobbyist magician, burn it down, sort through the ashes with a magnet. Um, Jay Limovitz, hire five or six horses, let them loose. When one cries out, she found it. Yep. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, they were all so good. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't choose one myself. So, um, I've put, um, all the names in a in a cup and the winner is oh it's a blank piece of paper there you go that's um it's no good i don't know why i put a blank piece of paper in here we go the winner is the hobbyist magician so the hobbyist magician whoever you are i'm not sure what your real name is if you could uh, leave a comment um or Email me at info at monstermagic.co.uk with your name and address, and I will send you the lone stranger. Congratulations, the hobbyist magician. Well done. Brilliant competition. Very proud of all of you. You should all be really, really pleased with your entries. Um, I enjoyed reading them, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and so that comes, yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, it is the end of another brilliant Saturday show. I hope you all enjoy it. And um, I shall see you next week.